Hello guys, welcome back to my training. My name is Ajayi Adebayo. In today's training, I bring to you a powerful uh, online, you know, banking system with a lot of fun functions and features, right? So this banking website that I want to show you today has a lot of features. I'm going to show you in less than one hour how you can develop this kind of banking, an online banking website uh, that you're seeing on your platform. Now it has loan features, uh, people can apply for loan. It has also investment features, people can invest. It also has um, like a pension scheme system, uh, people can invest, people can put their funds inside the um, system uh, like a pension and to get interest for their pension, right? It has a whole lot of features. Uh, by the time we start exploring these features, you are going to just love this. It has SMS notification, it has email notification. Anyone that you want to use, you can just enable everything from um, the end. So as you can see, it's a very slick and um, mobile responsive. We also have what we call staff management AI you know, as account officer. You have a lot of features. So let me just sign up so we can see. So I'm just going to click on sign up from here. So let me just register an account. So I'll say so let me register an account. So I'm gonna put my country and my phone number, I'm gonna put password. I say I'm going to agree to the policy and I'm going to click on register. So can you see that? So I just registered. So it's a, you need to complete your profile to get access to your dashboard. So I'll just complete my profile. So I'm going to choose my picture or my passport, or in case may be. So I'm just going to use this. I'm going to put my address. So I'm gonna put my zip code, put my state, and uh, my city, right? So all of these, I'm gonna just fill all the information. And I'm gonna click on submit. So you can see the registration process is very sleek and beautiful. Awesome registration process completed. Can you see that? So an account number has been assigned to me, and my available balance is zero here. Um, my deposit, my withdrawal, my transactions, my loan, my DPS, my FDR, I'm going to tell you the meaning of all that. And if, as you can also see, you have a referral system right here. So you can actually click here to refer. You see your latest credits, your latest debits, all of them are here. So let me just quickly verify our KYC. So I click on verification. So it's going to ask me my name again. So for KYC. So you can decide to activate or deactivate the KYC. So I'm going to say female, then uh, upload your government ID. So I'm going to choose my government ID, and um, let me just say my government ID is this. Then I'm going to click on submit. Awesome, KYC uploaded. So I can go click here. I can click here to see my KYC data. I can click here. It's going to pop up my KYC data for me, right? So. And I can click on a deposit. Can you see that? I can click on deposit. I can click on withdraw. And then I can click on the FD arrow, right? Fees deposit receipt plans. So, business deposit, I have 5% uh, for three days. You can see that all of this you can set from, for me. I can apply for it. Uh, I have um, DPS. DPS means deposit pension scheme. There are lifetime pension. Um, you put in $2,000 for five days right interest rate nine percent you can actually determine what kind of percent you want them to get the installment an installment in tower total installment deposit and you get this so you can control of this from the admin then if you go back to loans so you see that you see the loan system they have travel loan they have the student loan you can add as many loan you want you can have business loan you can have um, company loan you can have card you can go add card on the loan the loan uh, package is very, 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 very robust, and you can only use this as 
a loan uh, application system, right? So you also have transfer. So see that you can um, choose a bank, you can transfer to self bank, you can uh, choose other banks that you want to transfer to, or you can add beneficiary. So I can click on add beneficiary and zip bank to so any bank that you add here. You know, you can add there and say. Add beneficiary account number. So you can click on submit. Awesome. So you see that you have a beneficiary here. You already have a beneficiary that you can um, add. Can you see that? So on this cheese one, you can add uh, a beneficiary also. Account number, account name. So there is one account that I also have. Let me just log into that account so that I can add that account number, the account name. So I can, you can see how that works. So let me just copy this. I have one account. Yes, so let me log into that particular account. So I can add that as another beneficiary. So let me sign in and then. I'm going to use my mail. So let me sign into that particular account. Awesome. So, so this is the account number. So I'm going to add this account number here. So you see this account I have $73,000. So let me copy this account number for that cheese. So I'm going to add account number. Can you see that? What's the account name? So this is the account name, the council. Okay, you see that? We are adding, uh, okay, I'll pen. Uh, so you see that we really add the account, it brings out the account name, which is the um, username of the account, right? Which is the username of the account. So look at it here, username of the account. So when you add the account number, automatically it pops out the username of the account. So let me remove this again so you can see. So let me go back to um, Cheese Bank again so you can see that. Let me go back to um, sorry, let me go back to so I go back to Cheese Bank and add beneficiary. So if I put the account number, look at it now. This one I'm showing you, it's gonna pop up the account name automatically. So that's what I'm trying to show you, just like a normal bank. So I'm going to click on submit. Can you see that? So that beneficiary, if I click on other banks, I have a beneficiary, right? So you can add as many banks that you want to add. So then if I click on Cheese Bank, it also has a beneficiary here. Can you see that? So I can within Cheese Bank, can you see that? I can transfer money to this person. I can see that I transfer money to this person. Other banks, I also have the beneficiary. I can also transfer money to this person. I can also do a wire transfer from this account to another account entirely. So it's free. So you can see that. So now let's go back to the um, deposit system right now. So let me deposit on the account. So I'll click on deposit now. So how much do I want to deposit? I want to deposit using, so you can actually deposit using Paystack. You can deposit, you have a lot of over 20 payment gateways that you can use. By the time we get to the admin, I'll show you how, to, how all of that works. So, so um, let's say I want to use Paystack. Can you see that? So I can use Paystack, I can say $100. Let's say $20,000. So can you see that? Then I can say submit. So you see what it's going to do now, it's going to tell me to pay and it's going to take me to Paystack. You can start this transaction, you see that, because of the Paystack API, right? 
So let's go back again to deposit. So this time around, let's use a manual. So I click on deposit. And let's use the manual. I set this USD TRC as manual. And I'll say deposit $20,000. Now click here. So please follow deposit limit. So um, let me check the deposit limit from uh, the admin. So this is the admin. Now for you to log into the admin, and you just come here, your site name, I do slash admin. So let me go to deposit um, so that I can know the deposit limit. So I go to payment gateway and I'll go to manual payment. Right? So manual payment. So let me just click on edit. So the minimum deposit here is thirty thousand dollars. Can you see that? The minimum deposit here is thirty thousand dollars. So let me come back here and select this. Then I'll say thirty thousand dollars. Can you see that thirty thousand? Okay, let me just say thirty-five or forty thousand dollars. So forty thousand dollars. Can you see that? So uh, I'm gonna take a charge of four hundred dollars. So this is the total amount I'm paying. So I'm just click on submit. Can you see that? You are requested to pay forty thousand dollars. Please pay forty thousand four hundred dollars for successful payment. Follow the instructions. So please pay to the wallet below. So this is the wallet that I'm paying to, which is the wallet that you set from the admin. End. This is the wallet from the admin end that you set. We're also going to come to the admin end and explain the admin. End. So after you have deposited, you have to upload your receipt of deposit, right? You have to upload your receipt of deposit and you have to click on pay now. Also, when you that and deposit is showing pending, so you can click and only click and view the deposit details. So let's go back to the admin again now. So once you go back to the admin, when you register new users, you see that manage users, there is a deposit here. Yeah, can you see that? There's a deposit here. So you see that penny deposit. Can you see that? Penny deposit. So we can click here and see the details of that deposit. And we can either reject or approve. And we can see the receipt of that deposit. See that? So this bank can take deposit and you can also do withdraw, you can do wire transfer, and you can also do local transfer, right? So you click on approve and click on yes. Can you see that? So the deposit has been approved. So if I click on manage users, KYC penny. So this user KYC is pending. If I move this KYC, I can also come here and uh, scroll down, look at the user. So email verified, mobile verified, uh, two FA verification, KYC on verified. So I can say yes, I'm okay with it. And I can click submit. And you see that? So it means that what that user has been what verified. And you know, he has $40,000. So let's just go log in to that user's account again. So let's go back to dashboard. So you see the user's account number, can you see that $40,000 has been deposited? We have done one transaction, so if I click here, it's going to show me the transaction. So I can actually see you my transaction with my transaction number, it's going to give me my transaction. So it also has, it also has referral system, 2FA security, so I can set up 2FA security on this particular account, right? I don't want to go into that. So now let's go back to loan now. So let's go back to loan. Let's say I want to apply for a loan. I want to ask, apply for um, a travel loan and the travel loan is 40 uh, minimum is forty thousand dollars and maximum is three hundred thousand dollars can you see that so all of this you can set from admin end so and you're going to pay pay, uh, pay instrument twenty percent instrument interval one day total instrument five days can you see that so I can apply for this particular loan forty thousand dollars can you see that I click on confirm so when I click on confirm, it's going to tell me uh, look at the information here for the loan. So I click on apply. Can you see that? So application is what pending. So if I go to the admin end again, so let's just refresh the admin end. We are going to see um, so loan. Can you see that loan from here? It's a pending loan. So I'm going to click on pending loan, and then I will click on instrument or I'll click on details from here. And I can reject or apply approve. So I want to approve the loan. So I click on here, and the loan is approved. Can you see that? So when the loan is approved, if I log into uh, my dashboard, I'll see that my funds have been deposited. Can you see that? I deposited forty thousand dollars. And I also applied for a loan for uh, forty thousand dollars. So I have total of eighty thousand dollars. Can you see that? I have a total of eighty thousand dollars in this particular account. So See credit. So let's say debit now. Let's say okay now. I want to transfer from this account to another user account. I want to transfer to this guy who is in Chase Bank. 
So I want to transfer to this guy who is in chase mark, right? This is the person who is in chase mark. I want to transfer to uh, this particular guy. So I'll say within chase bank. Can you see that within chase bank? Uh, this is the guy's information. So I want to transfer money to him. So how much do I want to transfer? I want to transfer, let's say, twelve thousand dollars. Can you see that? Transfer twelve thousand dollars to this guy. Okay, I'll click on submit. So sorry, you are uh, exceeding the daily transfer limit. So what is the daily transfer limit? Let me check again. I think maybe the daily transfer limit is okay. Let me say one thousand dollars. So I'll click on transfer. So one thousand dollars has been transferred. So the daily transfer limit you can actually set that from the admin. We are also going to see that. So I can transfer to other bank too. Can you see that? I can transfer to other bank. So this is Perry who is in other bank. I can also transfer money to him in other bank. So I can sell the transfer. Uh, before I transfer to this guy who is in another bank, let's see if the money we transfer was um, deducted from what we have here. Can you see that? The money we transfer was deducted from here. So if we go to the other account, let's go to the other account, which is this guy, you will see that that fund has been, you see that $74,000, before it was $73,000, now it's all, it was what, $74,000, right? Can you see that? So if we go to here, yeah, we will see that somebody transferred him $1,000, and he has $40,000, and he has $3,000. Can you see that? So let's go back to this account from here right so and we can also click on more from here okay so more will give us the settings of this account so let's go back to uh, dashboard and then you see that we have um, our loan and everything we have seventy eight thousand dollars right so and you see our latest debit it's this can you see that so we can also do transfer to other banks so i can transfer to other bank so this is within cheese bank can you see that this is other bank so uh, we have um perry there from other bank so we can transfer how much i can say two thousand dollars and i click on this sorry minimum transfer is two hundred thousand dollars can you see that minimum transfer to other bank is two hundred thousand dollars so i can actually go and set that from the admin minimum account so i can go back to the admin here so let's just click on dashboard and uh, let's see wire transfer right okay let's see other banks look at other banks here so let's edit that so you can see minimum transfer so let's say minimum transfer let's put it at two thousand dollars so let's just save that minimum transfer two thousand dollars so let's come back here and then let me come here let me just refresh here. I want to transfer two thousand dollars to that particular account. So I click on transfer money and I'll put what two thousand dollars. And I'll click on this. Can you see that request submitted? Can you see that and it's pending? Two thousand dollars is being transferred to this guy. So if I go to other bank, see that I can transfer money. If I go to within cheese bank, I can transfer money. And if I go to beneficiaries. You know, I'm going to see the beneficiaries from here, and if I click here, I'm going to see the beneficiaries from here. So I'm going to approve that transaction right now from admin. So let's go back here. So don't don't forget that it's money transfer. Can you see that money transfer pending? So I come here, I'll see money transfer pending. Two thousand dollars with charge of uh, twenty dollars. Can you see that? So I'm going to click on details from here. So then I'm going to click on complete. Then I'll say yes. Either that, that fund has been transferred from there, right? So if I go back to this account here, let me go back to dashboard. So you see that that money has been transferred. So now let me go transfer from another account to this account. So let me copy this one and go to this account right here. So I'm going to go to um, transfer. So I will say uh, Cheese Bank. Then I will add beneficiary. Can you see that? So if I put this account number now, you're going to call up this name. Can you see that? At this Baba. Can you see that? I call up this name. So you see that? If we call up the account, like so, a normal bank, right? So I'm going to um, put that. So I can add as many beneficiaries that I want to add. As many beneficiaries that you want to add, you can just add them, all of them, it will take them, right? So now if I go to transfer, 
and I say cheese bank. So I go to within cheese bank. So it's going to show me this and tell me to transfer. So when I click on transfer, I can transfer two thousand dollars back to this guy. Now click on transfer. Can you see that two thousand dollars will transfer to this guy? And that two thousand dollars, if I go back to my dashboard will uh, be deducted from this my dashboard can you see that i'll be deducted so if i come back to this guy's account here so let's go back to my dashboard i'll see two thousand dollars has already been added to his account and you see that he already has five transactions if we go to the five transaction we're going to see that he received two thousand dollars can you see that he uh, transferred two thousand dollars can you see that and he was charged one dollars he deposited you know, loan taking it took loan of uh, forty thousand dollars. Can you see that? Then here he deposited via USDT forty thousand dollars. <laughs> so this is a very very robust and a very very powerful system, right? So you can see come to DPS. DPS here means deposit pension scheme. Can you see that? You can say I need a lifetime pension, right? And say I need a lifetime pension and you can apply for a lifetime pension and you can say yes yeah, you can say yes so you can see that these are the lifetime pension it's going to be for five days per installment two thousand can you see that at the end of the day it's going to get twenty one thousand so if I'll click on what confirm so can you see that so he has applied for a lifetime pension and the lifetime pension is running so let me go to FDRO FDRO is just like uh uh, investment is it that one day long for one day get profit every three days can you see that profit five percent so it's just like an investment so i can also apply for it how much do i want to put so minimum here is uh, ten thousand dollars i'll click on apply now put minimum of ten thousand dollars can you see that i'm going to apply for that can you see that application is um successful so okay i'm just going to click on confirm can you see that fdr is successful can you see that if I go back to my dashboard again, you see all of my transactions. Can you see that the latest debit and latest credit? And you can log in this on your mobile phone. It's very, very mobile responsive. So if I show it on mobile here, I'm going to see the way it's going to look here like this on mobile. Can you see that on mobile? It's very, 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 very mobile friendly. So if I click here now and I said uh, deposit, so I come here, I'm going to see all the deposits that was made, right? This is really, really, really awesome. So what about if we not do transfer, right? So if we go to transfer and uh, we want to do wire transfer, so we can click on wire transfer. So wire transfer, you can enter how much you want to transfer, $10,000. Account name, you can see those check, right? Account number, so put the account number. I want to transfer to the click on submit. Can you see that transfer request was sent successful? Can you see that wire transfer? See the recipient info here. Can you see that? And the wire transfer is on pending. So if we go back to the admin, let's go back to the admin and refresh the admin. So we are going to come here and see pending transfer money transfer. Can you see that? So it's on pending. Okay, this is the other transfer we did. So complete the transaction so that transaction is completed so um we will go back to wire transfer to so you see where you can set the settings for the wire transfer and you see that so you can do the settings for the uh, wire transfer so if we go back to uh, let's go back to fdro running fdro so we're going to see the fdro that is running 10 percent fdro means fixed deposit received can you see that is running and we can see the installments from here no installment has been paid right so if we go back to um dps you can see running dps can you see that running dps being deposit pension skin and we can see we can see the installment and this is running can you see that none is yet paid for this skin so you can see this is a very robust system that you can use to perform transactions. You can even go to manage branches, right? You can click, you can add branch staff, right? You can add branch staff and all that. So let me just um, and scroll through this dashboard for you, how you can 
um, you know, set this all of these settings from the dashboard. But I'm not going to um, um, do that here now. I'm going to show you how you can, you know, deploy this system in less than one hour. Right? You can deploy this system in less than one hour. You can actually deploy the system in less than one hour. So I'm going to show you how you can deploy this system and how you can do all of the settings from the admin end and how you can, um, you know, enjoy this uh, robust banking system that comes with fixed deposit, come with um, wire transfer, come with internal transfer, come with um, local transfer, bank to bank transfer. Right, comes with deposits so people can actually deposit it have a lot of deposit um, payment gateway so let me just show you the gateways here it has a lot of payment and uh, deposits so if I go to deposits okay uh, let me check here so yeah you see a payment gateway so if I click automatic payment gateway so you're going to see that it has you see advanced cash people can deposit with authorize or net you can deposit with blockchain with cash may Coinbase commas, coin gate, coin payment, you know, coin payment fair. So the deposit system is very, 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 very robust. So how can you develop this kind of system, right? How can you develop um, this kind of system? So I'm, going, I'm just going to show you how you can easily develop this system. So, so develop this kind of system. The first thing that I usually tell my client is that you are going to get a domain name and host, right? So uh, I highly recommend Namecheap for you in, for this particular website. I highly recommend Namecheap because if you don't have the desired um, applications in your hosting services, you may not be able to deploy and develop this kind of website effectively. So when you come to Namecheap, what you have to do is to purchase your domain name and your hosting. So let's say I want to purchase a domain name called Cheese Online. Bank.com. So, as a matter of fact, when you're purchasing domain name, please don't use this word bank because you don't have a trademark, you don't have um, the, the certificate and all that you need to create a bank. So, this is just like a practical purpose, right? So, because you use it, so many of these guys you think that you want to use it for fraud and they may not approve your, your domain. So, I'm just going to put that there and then um, I'm going to search for that domain name. If that domain name is available, I'm going to click on Add to Cart. Right, so I'm going to click on Add to Cart. So you can see they're telling me that this means I cannot buy this domain name because I have bank there. So let me just remove bank and say it's here. So I'm going to click on Add to Cart. You see that it's going to allow me to get that domain name. So I'm going to go to share those things and uh, I'm going to add my hosting to that. So it's going to tell me Add to Cart. So I'm going to add that to Cart. So this is the total money I'm paying for this. I can even apply coupons if um, you have honey. I use honey, so I don't know if your coupon is still working. But let me just try it if that is going to work. And um, it's not going to take much time for for us to get that. Okay, I think I don't have the patience, so let me just exit that. So all you have to do is what you just need to go ahead and purchase this domain name and hosting. Now, when you purchase this domain name and hosting, you will be given cPanel username and password, right? You're going to be given a cPanel username and password. So the cPanel username, you're going to use it to log in. So when you log in, you're going to see something like this. So this is an example of cPanel username and password. Can you see that? So I'm logging to my own. They are going to give you the URL. They are going to give you the um, the username, and they are going to give you the password. So when they give you that, all you need to do is just log in. So I'm already logging on my own. So when I'm logging to the cPanel, this is my cPanel. What I need to do, I just come to File, and then I'll click on File Manager. Now I want you to follow me as I install this because it's very very simple. So that you can also do the same thing that I'm trying to do. Just run on my shoulder. And do exactly what I am trying to do because it's as simple as ABC. So when you go to your file manager, you just click public underscore HTML, right? So when you click on public underscore HTML, this is my public underscore HTML. I have, you know, I have a lot of stuff inside my public underscore HTML, right? So for you, if you are designing this for a new client, all you need to do is just click on upload. 
but me I'm not, I'm not going to do that I'll just create um, this I'll call it cheese just create a folder cheese b so this is my folder cheese b I call it cheese b right so I call it cheese b so I'm just going to open up that folder double click on it to open and I'm going to click on upload and I'm going to click on select then I'm going to come where I have the file So this is the file you just upload the file now for you to get this file i'm going to give you tell you how you're going to get this file at the end of this training i'm going to show you how you can get access to this particular file right i'm going to tell you how you can get access to this particular file do not try to reinvent the wheel so all you have to do is to make sure you're following me you follow me and um everything that i'm doing and you try to replicate the same system because if you want to develop this kind of website it's going to take you more than three years for you to learn the programming language that will enable you to code this kind of website and you know you you need to learn how to make money fast you need to learn how to do things fast you need to get learn how to get a job done but it's only when you get a job done that you make money so i'm just going to click here and uh, i'm going to show me so i'll right click on this can you see that now click on extract so like i said don't worry about this i'm going to show you at the end of this training how you can get access to this file right I'm going to tell you how you can easily get access to this file that I'm using for this. So when you have access to this file, all you have to do is just make sure you are doing exactly what I am doing. So I'm going to close this. So then I'll click on reload. So the file is already uploaded. I'll just right click on this. Then I'll click on delete. And I'll click on delete. So I'll double click on this file. So here are the files that I need. So I'll just select all of these files. And I'll click on move. Then I'll move them to the folder I created. So I'll just remove that file, then move files. So if I go back one more step, I'm going to see the file right here. Can you see that? The file is right here. Can you see that these are the files? All of them right here. So this is my um, name, all right? So I'm just going to. So let me um, just go back to my C panel. So I want to load those files now. So this is my domain name slash cheese please. So I'm gonna I'm gonna load that. So you know when I try to load that, it's telling me composer detected in your platform. Composer dependencies require PHP version 8.1. So I'm just going to go back to my um, C panel, right? I'm gonna go back to my C panel and I'll look for PHP, right? So it's asking me that my PHP version need to be version 8.1. So for all your C panels, you always have PHP version. So I'm going to click on this, right? I'm going to click on that, and then um, I'm going to increase my PHP to version 8.1. So I did load my PHP version for me. So in any C panel you are using, you are always going to see that. So you see that I'm already using 7.4. So I'm just going to come down here, increase it to 8.1, and I'm going to click on apply. I'm going to apply that. Awesome. So when I apply that and I refresh this, uh, you will see that it's going to show me this error. Means my PHP version is working well. So I'm just going to do slash install. So I'll say slash install. All right. So when I do slash install, it's going to call up the application for me. Can you see that? It's call up the application for me to install. So it's a very very simple step for you to follow. All you have to do is just watch this video, pause it, do exactly what I am doing. So I'm going to click on agree and it's going to take me right here. So when it comes right here, you see that it's telling me that GMP PHP extension is not enabled. So if this extension is not enabled, there's no way I can install this. So that's why I always advise that you use a very good server so that all of these features, they must have it. So you see that it requires all of these features and this server has all of these features. But this one is not enabled. So let's go back to our C panel. And let us enable that so you just come here and then um, you know under extension so you look for gmp gmp so you see my gmp here is not enabled so i'm just going to click on this to make sure it's enabled right so my gmp is not enabled right so if i come right here and i say recheck and i scroll down you see that it has been enabled can you see that so just follow my full step you're going to get this done so i'll click on next step when I click on next step, so you can see it's telling me that uh, my database is available. 
HTSS is available, but all of this is not available. So it needs core bootstrap cache to have a permission of 775, right? So let's go get that done now. So let's go back here. So, so it needs core. So I'm going to open a core. What else does it need? Core bootstrap cache. So core. Let me move this one here. Core bootstrap cache. So I'm right click on cache. That's a change permission. That's a I'll click on this one, so 775. So I'll click on change permission, right? So you need um, core bootstrap cache to be what? 775. You also need core storage to be 775. So let's go back there. So I'll go back um, one more step. So core, core, I'm in core already. So this is storage. Let me check very well. You need um, core storages. Core storage. So this is storage right here. We are inside core and this is storage. So I'm just right click, change permission, and say 775. And I'll click on change permission. So what's the next one is asking me? It's asking me for um, core storage app, right? Core storage app. So I'm going to come here. This is app, core storage. So okay, storage, yeah, open storage, then app, right? So I'm going to right click on this. Change permission 775. So, what is the next one? Core storage app. I've done that. Core storage framework. Core storage logs. So, let's go back here. Core storage framework. So, I'll right click. Change permission. Um, we'll do that. Then, log. Change permission 775. This is very simple. Right? So, I'm going to reload this. Then, I'm come here and um, I'll click on recheck. Awesome, can you see that everything is working perfectly well? And I'm going to click on next step. So when I click on next step, it's going to ask me to uh, install this application right away. So I'm going to install this application. So we say purchase verification. You see that you can use this script when you get it from me. You can use this application. You don't need uh, the purchase verification code or anything. So I'll just use this love. Anything you like, just put it there. Right? This boy. Right, just put anything that you want to put there. So database name, database host, user name, and password. So I have to create this. So let's go back to here. So I'm going to type database. So we need to create database. Let me see my SQL database wizard. Right. So I'm going to give it name, and I, I'm going to say cheesebb. Right. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to come here and say cheese user, right? So password, I will click on password generator. I will generate this password. So I'll copy this password and I will say I have copied this password, right? So I'm going to open a notepad and put this password there. I'm going to open a notepad and put this password there. And I'm going to click on create user. Awesome. So my user has been created, then I'm going to copy this username and password. So uh, here's the password that I created. So I'm going to put this right here. So I'll click on all privileges, then I'm going to click on next step. Also, can you see that my database has been created? So let's go back to our installation. So what's my database name? I'm going to copy my database name. Uh, this is my database name right here. I'm going to copy the database name and then I'm going to put the database name here. So the database host will be localhost. So just type localhost right here. The database user, let's get a database user. The database user will be this. I'm going to copy this database user. This is the database user and the database password. So here is the database password. So this is the database password. I'm going to copy the database password and put it right here. So my username is admin and my password is admin. So you can actually change that, you know, when you are done. So I can just put my email right here now and I will say admin at. So you can change the username and password after you install the application. Admin at. So just make sure that you do everything correctly and you hit the install button. If everything is cool, 
you are going to get that this application is installed. Can you see that? Please delete the install folder from the server. So if I click on go to website and come here, boom! Can you see that? This is so so awesome. Can you see that? This is so 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 awesome. This is my website up and running. Can you see that? So if I come here again and I say go to admin. I see that it's going to take me to the admin and the admin username is admin and the admin password is what admin so i'm going to log into the admin right away awesome can you see that this is really 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 amazing this is really 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 amazing can you see that so uh the next thing i'm going to do is what uh, let me just go back from here so don't forget you said we should, we should remove the install folder all right so let's go back to the main folder which is the cheese the public then we go to cheese here we install that so cheese db so we still have the install folders so i'll right click on this install and i'll delete this folder please make sure you do that right so let me just remove that so so this is the admin and this is the uh, front end can you see that cheese is the uh, front end and you can see that this is really 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 slick beautiful awesome website so i'm just going to show you how you can walk around this so this is the admin so now it's telling us to set a cool job so that when people apply for loan um you know you'll get your loan and the loan we you know duration we can't properly wear the same thing with the gps and the fdro so it's able to and create a cool job so i'm just going to show you how to create a cool job in the next one minute so you just copy this code it's giving you here and you come to your C panel here and you type Chrome. So you click on Chrome Jobs. Then you come here and you see common settings. Then you just choose once per five minutes, choose that. This common setting again, just choose at the beginning, right? Then leave everything that you see here like that. Then put the command here and you click on add new Chrome job. So it's going to add a Chrome job for you. Let's go back again and the DPS Chrome command. So I'm going to copy that again and I'm going to come here and then um, I'll come here again. Common settings, I'll say one for five minutes. Common settings, I'll do this at the beginning and I'll leave the other things. Then put this here and I'll say add Chrome job. Can you see that? This Chrome job has also be added. So let's add the last Chrome job. I'm going to copy this then I'm going to come right here again. And then I'm going to say common settings. I'll do the same thing that I did for all of them. Put this right here and I'm going to add. So I've created the three cron jobs that this guy asked me to create. So I'm just going to exit this cron job and I'm going to refresh it. Awesome. So I've set up my cron job and I have refreshed that. Awesome. So now the next thing I'm going to do right here is to look for the um, um, uh, settings directly so let's look for the settings so if you look at this here it has manage users you see active users ban users means you can ban users you can verify or verify user you can verify mobile right you can verify their email you can verify their mobile you can verify their kyc you know with their balance and all of that so let's just click on that so you see deposits you can see the pending approved deposits successful deposit rejected deposit initiated deposit and all deposits you are going to see them there so withdraw you are going to see withdraw methods from here you can set your withdraw method how you want them to withdraw you want them to withdraw to a bank account or you want them to withdraw using a cryptocurrency whichever withdraw method you want them to use you can um, set it up from there then you're going to see money transfer you pay the transfer you try to transfer money you try to transfer money to own bank like um, the same bank you're going to see that trying to do transfer to other bank you are going to see that and you also try to do wire transfer you are also going to see that so um yes so you're going to see wire transfer to how to set up your wire transfer you're also going to see other banks right here so money branches is money branches used to add a branch manager and you know uh, like some other banks they have many branches so a manager in one branch can log into uh, the other branch or the other person's account stuff like that but i'm not going to cover that so you can go to plans right let's go down here you can go to plans so you see the fdro plans the dps plans and you also see the loan 
So people can apply for this loan and you can set a percentage for them on this loan, right? You can set a percentage for them that, okay, if you want to apply for $50,000 loan, you'll need to pay um, a particular amount for the interest of that loan. So when they pay that particular amount of the interest of that loan, you approve that loan for them. And when you approve that loan, the loan will be inside their account, right? So that is that for plans. So you're also going to see where you can set up the FGRO, you see when it's running, and the DPS and the loans, you get it now. So when you come to Payment Gateway here, you can set up your payment. If you want people to automatically pay, so you can set up your automatic payment gateway. People can automatically deposit to the bank and the money is going to appear on their mail wallet and also appear on their account balance. It's, it's really, really awesome. So you can also set up manual such that you know you can um, provide an account number or you can provide a Bitcoin address number. So when they pay into that account and they submit their payment details, then you are going to see it from the admin if the payment was actually made and you are going to approve that phone. And when that phone is approved, it's going to show up directly in their account balance. So support tickets, you can see people who send tickets and you can answer to their ticket, right? So then we can go to general settings. Let's go to general settings. Now, general settings, so you can set up your bank name, you can set up your color. So here now I can say cheese, cheese bank. Can you see that? So I can set up my time zone. I can choose any time zone I want from here. And I can also set up my base color. You can change your base color. You can change your secondary color. Right. So account number prefix is the first two digits that you're going to see the account number. So I want my account number to start maybe with 56. I can put that. Account number length so 15. I can say I want it to be 12. I think it's minimum of 12. You can get OTP expiration time, right? I can say 120. So if you enable SMS or you enable email OTP, so you're going to send OTP for them. And at the end of 120 seconds, the OTP is going to expire and we ask them to resend OTP, right? So this is the minimum limit, right? This is the minimum um, limit. So the minimum limit that somebody can um, actually do transaction on, on this is, uh, let's say the minimum limit is one, then the daily limit is um, 1,000, the monthly limit is about 50,000. So you can, you can say you want your monthly limit to be 200,000, monthly limit 200,000, your, your, daily, your, your daily limit uh, maybe say um, 12,000, right? You want to charge, you know, fee charge or percentage charge. So you can say one percentage or you can say three percentage charge. And all you need to do is what you just click on this button to submit that details. Everything is going to be saved. So you go to logo and favico, right? So you click on select logo. So make sure you design your logo and you can just select your logo. And then um, so I can use this particular logo right here. You see that it's going to change. So I can also. Select my favicon if I have a favicon that I want to use. I can select the favicon. Let me see if I have. Okay, I can I can use this uh, favicon. Yes, I can use it as favicon. So click on submit. Now when you click on submit, um, you're not going to see the changes immediately, right? You're not going to see the changes immediately. And also uh, click cache, but the changes will definitely re reflect. So sometimes you also need to press F5. F5 means hard refresh. So when you press F5, you get hard. Refresh. Add refresh can you see that so hard refresh can uh, bring down for you so let's go back to system configuration so online user registration do you want to enable it if you want people to be able to register you say yes then branch user registration i don't want branch user registration I say no you want to force ssl yes agree yes force secure password you can say you want people to use secure password or you want them to use any other password so you can force secure password then you want KYC verification, people should be able to verify their KYC, know your customer, right? Then you want email verification. So if your server is sending email, your email verification is working very well, you can say yes or you can say no, but I'm just going to disable email. Then email notification, you can say yes. You want email notification. Mobile notification, if you enable mobile notification, that means you are going to um, purchase SMS from this mobile gateway such as Twilo, and the likes so but i don't want to enable that 
and also the SMS notification I want to disable. So if you enable it, when people perform transactions and you correctly configure your SMS, they are going to receive SMS of the transaction, right? So you want people to be able to deposit, yes. You want them to withdraw, yes. You want the FDRO, yes. You want DPS, yes. You want loan, enable. Other bank transfer. If you want them to be able to transfer to other bank, you enable it. Their own bank, wire transfer, yes. So OTP via email, you want them to get OTP maybe when they are doing transaction, you want them to get email OTP. So you just um, enable anyone that you want. So the same thing with the referral system. So let me just click on submit. I think I'm cool with all of that. So you go to KYC setting from here, and what do you want them to submit? Your KYC name or mother, name or father, gender. Right. So I can edit this now. I can say instead of name or father, I can say first name. Right. I'll submit that. Now I can edit this and I'll say last name. And edit that. And I can say gender. So this gender we have male, female. I can even add more. I click on add, select one, and I can say file. I can say required, and I can say form. Say upload government ID, right? So now click here. Your government ID should be JPEG. Should be all of these image format. Now click on add. Right, so I can add as many as I want to add, but I'm just click on submit. I'm very, very cool with that. So the next thing we're going to look at here is extension, right? So you can configure it to use um, CAPTCHA, right? You can configure it to use CAPTCHA, but I don't want to go into all of that. And you can also configure uh, your talk live chat. So you can have the app key given to you from the talk.to, uh, right? So you can also add language, you can add SEO. Let's go to notification. So let's go to notification, right? So a global template. So global template. So you can see here you can remove this logo and add your own logo. So I can just click here as I upload an image. I can add my own logo. So when emails are sent, you're gonna see that particular logo, right? So I can add my own logo. So you can see that. So I click on submit. So we go to global templates, you're going to see all of this information. So let's go to email settings. So this is email settings. So you can decide to set up SMTP. If you know how to do that correctly, good. Or you can try to go with um, PHP mail, right? So PHP mail is also very good. So let me just test that it is working. Yes, email sent successful. So you can go to SMS settings. Can you see that? So you can use any of these SMS, but make sure that you enable SMS. So we have the click up there, InfoBeep, MessageBed, Nesmo, SMS Brokers, Twilo, Test Magic, Custom API. So you can use any of these. If you want to use, I don't want to go into SMS uh, settings right now. So these are different kind of messages that they, they will get when you know they perform transactions. So I would just advise you to um, leave that alone. That you should not bother yourself about that. So the same thing. You want to manage pages. You want to change uh, information on the pages. So this is the home page so this is the information on your home page so you can say click on this edit button you can see about us we are currently you see that visa bank so i can change it to cheese can you see that you can just come here you can even change these images you can you can select another images and put here so and now i can click on submit so we sent in our goal, I can click on edit. So I can click on the key bank. Right, so we click on submit. Our vision.
So, so you can go to uh, burn pages. You are burn that, and you can go to um, you know burn and search on. Let's go back to about us page again. Okay, so you can just manage pages. Click on the manage pages. So this is your contact. You can click on this. And you can click on um, edit all of this information here. I just save that to the best plan. Go with us. Can you see that? All of these you can just take your time out to edit them. Then you can go to manage session. There is a bad section, right? So you can manage your session from there. All right. So these are your sessions. You can always manage all of these sections from from here, right? So another very beautiful aspect of this is that you are going to now let us set the payment gateway. How will people deposit? So we have the automatic payment gateway. So let's say you want to um, uh, use blockchain. You want people you want you want to use blockchain to collect deposit right automatically. So you are going to click on edit. Then you're going to enter your blockchain API key, then your SV code. I'm going to add it right here. Then you want them to be able to pay with PTC. And I'm going to add this right here. And say blockchain. So you just call here Bitcoin. Right? So Bitcoin deposits. So minimum amount you want them to be able to deposit with Bitcoin is what hundred, and the maximum amount is hundred thousand. So fee charge is zero percentage is two percentage. So BTC you give the symbol BTC. So one BTC is equals one US is equal to what one BTC. You can decide to also do it to convert for US. So you just click on submit. Can you see that? So that is going to submit. So you can see go back to automatic gateway and enable how many gateway you want, right? So it also has pay stack. If you're in Nigeria, it also has paper. Can you see that? It also has paper. So you just put your paper email from here. So you add what currency you want to add? Uh, so USD. USD are new, right? So you come here and say paper. So all of these the users is going to see when they are trying to deposit minimum deposit 100, like I said, maximum 100,000. Fees charge zero, set a charge three. Symbol is a man, is paper. So you can do that. You can click on submit. Can you see that? So you can go back there to you can set pay stack, pay uh, just all of these you have all of those details, right? So you have all of those details. Then you can also add manual, right? So let's put manual payment. So manual payment, I'm gonna click on add new. So gateway, I can call it USDT, right? USDT, I can say manual payment. It's USDT, right? Currency, I will say USDT. Okay, USDT. So one dollar is equal to one USDT. Minimum, I can say hundred thousand, hundred. Maximum, I can say 100,000. Fee charge 0, percentage charge 3. So I cannot say, please take payment into the USDT account below. So, right, I can do that. So, let me go and get uh, one of the accounts. So, So I can then make payment here. Okay, centralize it and I can pull it. 
and if you not then i can add one more feed so when they make payment select one i'll say five required i'll say upload sorry i'll say upload receipts so i want it to be jpeg or png so when they make payment manually they should be able to upload receipts so i'm going to click on submit awesome so the next payment method I want to create here is a withdrawal, right? I want to create, create withdrawal. So let's go to withdrawals. So let's go to withdrawals. So let's go to withdrawal. How do you want them to withdraw? Withdrawal method. So you have to set withdraw method for them too. So I'm going to click on add from here. Name, I can say. I can say crypto. I can withdraw with crypto right so which of the crypto bitcoin i want to be able to withdraw bitcoin oh, i want them to be able to withdraw with their bank account so anyone you want them to withdraw to so minimum 100 maximum 100,000 fees charge zero percentage charge three right so then i'll tell them to let's see i'll say test yes required each coin wallet so they should be able to see it to enter the enter, enter their bitcoin wallet right Please withdraw using Bitcoin. So you can enter all of the wallets. You can enter all of them, right? So here is uh, one. Enter all of the wallets. Awesome. Can you see that? So another thing I'm going to show you how to set is the loan, right? So let's go to loans. I'm going to click on loans. Uh, loans. So let's go to plans, then go to loan plans. So I'm going to add loan plan for them to be able to apply for loan. So loan, I can say travel loan. Can you see that travel loan? Minimum amount, I'll say 100. Maximum amount, I'll say 100,000. Right, percentage installment. What percentage installment, I can say. Five percentage installment interval. I can say thirty days. Right, total installment be thirty. Right, and means profit is fifty there. Can you see that? So charge will apply if they delay one day. Charge will apply if they delay one day. Fees charge. I will say five percent penalty. Five dollar. No, let me put zero here. And five percent penalty if they delay. Can you see that? So let's just save that. So you can see that. Added that, then I can see business loan. The same thing, hundred, hundred thousand. The instrument, I can see. I can say 200 days, I can say 30 days, total installment, I can say 10. So it's going to calculate admin's profit. So charge will apply after one day, zero and five percent. So I'm going to click on that. So I can continue to add loans. So if I go to loan plans, I will see all of the loan plans that I've added. I've added two loan plans. Let me just add one more loan plan. So I cannot see business investment. So I can see 200, 100, yeah, and I see 100,000 dollars. So for installment, I can see for installment, you be 
500 this okay for this total instrument i can say 20 and we're going to calculate the profit so after one day this is zero and this is five percent i'm going to click on that so if i go to loan plans i'm going to see all of the loan plans the same thing with fdr plans right and can add the fdr plans right so you see fixed deposit receipt so they can actually do fees deposits, right? I can say life time savings. So they can save interest rate 10% interest rate instrumental interval, let's say 20 days. Lock this, the money should be locked for what 360 days. So they cannot withdraw in 360 days. Minimum amount they can put is 100, 100 and maximum is 100,000. I see that 100,000. So, user will get a minimum of 10 USD to a maximum of 10,000 USD per 20 days. I see that good investment. You are going to put that there. So, you can add one more debt or two more. Then, you can also go to a um, uh, deposit pension scheme. You can do the same thing for deposit pension scheme. I say pension advance. So instrument that interval say 20 days total instrument say maybe 20 per instrument i can say 100 interest rate as a five rate can you see that total deposit is 2000 user's profit is 100 total maturity is 2001 can you see that so i can say charge you apply if you delay one day year zero year five percent i can click submit Awesome. So you can see that you can go ahead and then set up this uh, system like this. It's very simple to actually set up. Within how many minutes you are done setting up everything. Right? Within how many minutes you are done setting up everything. So this is a cheese bank. Let's just see if we can. Um, let's log out from this guy here. So this is it. Cheese bank. Can you see that showing she's back here and you can see welcome to the just banking system? So we're gonna see all those plans that we created now. You see that lifetime that so you create you can create TV so it took here and take here, right? The same team pension you can create all of that. So you see we have the best loan, so you see the loans here. Can you see that that were created from the front end, the back end, all of them apply up here. Yeah. So if I click on sign up, let's just test the sign up. And let's see, Caro. And I put, um, yes, I just put that password. So, so I'm going to click on register. Username must be at least six characters. Okay. Right. So this is strong password. Because we set all of that. Right? We set all of that with a strong password. Awesome. But is it up? So you need to complete your profile registration. So you see that. And if I go here, so you put your passport. So you address and all of that, then you click on submit. Can you see that registration success? Can you see? Awesome. Can you see the account number automatically given to this particular user? Can you see that? You can click here to verify KYC. See 
email and your for your ID. So this let's say this is my ID and we'll click on submit. So you can see that awesome this is really 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 awesome and you can see the deposit so let's see the deposit so you see the deposit deposit now and you see that select one you see all of them that we set and you see that we pay for now and say two hundred dollars click on submit yeah please follow deposit limit so how much deposit limit did we put just one let me say hundred thousand So you need to follow the deposit limit, right? So you see that it's going to take me to PayPal. Can you see that? It's going to take me to PayPal to deposit that funds on PayPal. Can you see that? <laughs> it is massive, really, really massive. So if I go to manual deposits, can you see that manual deposits? So if I put hundred thousand, so I'm going to put that. Can you see that? Look at the address. Can you see that? Ask me to deposit. So if I click on choose, we'll choose any receipt. Just choose any receipt. Can you see that? And I click on pay now. So when admin sees that, can you see that it's showing and so if I go to the admin now and I refresh the admin right here, you see that it's gonna show user of register and the kyc can you see the user so if i go to the details right here of the user account and i can verify the user right i can verify the user so the user is verified right and if i also come here deposits i'm going to see pending deposits for that particular user can you see that now click on details, it's on pending. I can reject it and I can approve it. I see that I've approved that. So we come to dashboard now. You see the user has a hundred thousand dollars. And if we go back to the loan now, I've, I've previously explained all of this before. So let's say we want to um, um, apply for a loan of you know uh, fifty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars. So I click on apply. Thirty thousand dollars. Now click on apply. See that thirty thousand dollars total instrument is twenty. Per instrument is one hundred and fifty thousand. So I'll click on this apply. I see that it's on pending. And if I go back to my admin, let me just refresh my admin. It's going to tell admin that there is a loan. Can you see that? You go to loan. Uh, you're going to see pending loan. Can you see that pending loan? I click on details and I can approve. Can you see that? If I go to the user and I click on dashboard again, you see it has been approved. Can you see that? So my loan here, look at it here. If I come to loan, see so my loan is running already. If I click on my instrument, it's going to show all the instrument that I'm going to pay. Not yet. So when it's yet, it automatically deducts the instrument from my account. So, and also I can click on withdraw, can you see that? I can click on withdraw, click on withdraw money. So I want to withdraw Bitcoin, so I'm at so $200. You see that, and it's going to charge me for it. And you see that, you withdraw using Bitcoin, so I'm going to enter my Bitcoin wallet. You see, configure the Bitcoin wallet. I'm going to click on that. Can you see that? Withdraw appended. So if I go back to the admin again, it's going to tell me that somebody wants to withdraw. Can you see that? Pending withdrawals. Who is withdrawing? Look at the person here. So if I click on details and I can approve that withdrawal. Thanks. Can you see that? 94 because admin charges applies. Can you see that? So if you come here now I click on that word, it's no longer going to be one touch. Can you see that? Withdrawal admin. So if I click on all transactions, it's going to show me all of the transactions. Can you see that? If I go to DPS, it's going to show me all the DPS plan. If I go to the FDRO, it's going to show me the FDRO. Then if I click on more, it's going to show me my account details, right? And if I click on transfer, it's going to ask me, do I, do I want Cheese Bank? So if I want 
chief rank. I'm going to add beneficiaries. So if I click on beneficiaries and I see chief rank, it will tell me to add beneficiaries of chief rank, right? So I've already shown you all of that. So if I want to also do wire transfer, I'm going to add beneficiary. The transfer system is not currently available, right? Because we did not um, add it, right? So I also do wire transfer, chop on it. All right, so this is how this system works. So you can see that this is a very robust system. You see that withdrawals of 200, deposit of 100. And you see that so this is really, 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 really powerful. So, guys, if you want to get access to this particular script that I use for this uh, particular, I'm ready to give it to you. You can see the mobile responsiveness. Mobile responsiveness is wow. Is it not? All right, guys. So if you want access to this system, I'm going to give you access. If you're in Nigeria, I'm going to give you access to this system for just sixty thousand naira, right? So with sixty thousand naira, you can access this system. And with ninety-five US, if you are not in Nigeria, you're going to pay ninety-five US dollars to access this system. I'm going to give you the uh, um, the complete solution. So all you need to do is just follow my video. Do exactly what I do. And you can even go on Fiverr, you can go on Upwork, you can go on Freelancer and set up, you know, your business account and let them know that you can develop such a robust banking loan application, FGRO um, system, you know, to accommodate all of these functions and you will get a lot of people who are going to pay you to get, get this done for them. All right, guys, so please, please make sure you smash the subscribe button and the notification bell so that when i get to drop videos like this you see um, get to get your notification on this so if you also need a sophisticated system and then you want a programmer to do that for you you can also call on us call on me you can see my whatsapp number you know on the description of this video and you can always send me a message on whatsapp i'm very very active on whatsapp and i'm going to reply you I'm going to do business with you. Please do not fall for people who are trying to imitate me, who are trying to do as if they are me. Do not fall for anyone. My WhatsApp number will always be in the description box. You can check me out on WhatsApp. And if you are paying for this script, you can pay online. I'm going to drop the payment link. You can pay online and you can get access to this script anytime, any day, even in the middle of the night. So once again, my name is Ajayi Abdebayo, Africa's number one digital marketer, web developer, and coach. Thank you until I see you again.